everyone, it's Lisa from I Dream in Soap. Welcome to my channel. Now, for today's soap, I'm using a new fragrance that I tried recently. It's called Molten Amber, and I really loved the scent of it. And we'll talk more about that when we get to the main soap. But what Molten Amber made me think about was a particular scene. If you've seen Jurassic Park, and there's that scene where there's a bug that's actually been sort of fossilized in a lump of amber and that made me think oh I'd like to do that sort of thing for a soap so that's where I'm going with this now what I'm going to do with mine is I'm going to do sort of like a, a fossilized well hopefully a fossilized dragonfly in some molten amber Obviously mine won't be molten by the time it turns into a soap, but hopefully we'll get the idea. So what I've done here is I'm starting off with making my dragonfly. Now I'm gonna do it fairly sort of browns and black sort of colors because we're talking about fossils here. So I don't wanna be putting a colorful dragonfly into my amber. And what I want to do first, as you can see here, I've rolled out some soap dough nice and thinly. Now this soap dough here, this colour is going to be very similar to the actual colour that I'm going to do my main soap. And the reason for that is I'm using it for the wings and I want the wings to almost look as if they're sort of transparent. So that's one bit that I'm doing. And then I've also rolled out some black soap dough. Now with rolling these out, I have rolled out, not sure how well you can see this, the sort of goldy colour, that's been rolled out, I'd say probably about five millimetres thick, whereas my black has been rolled out pretty well as thin as I could get it, so that's probably about two millimetres thick. If you've seen me rolling out my soap dough before, I know I haven't done this on screen, you'll know that I always roll it out between um, some plastic bags I just reuse these time and time again and again if you see my videos in the past <laughs> these are the same bags that I've used every single time I've never changed them however I think this one may be coming to the end of its life look at this oh no I've actually got a hole so it still was okay but I may have to get myself a new plastic bag Right, anyway, back to the soap. So let's get these sorted. So what I want to do is, I'm going to take this goldy color, and then I'm gonna take my black, I don't put any cornflour or anything. I find if you sort of peel the bag back like that, rather than trying to lift it up, it doesn't even matter if it's a little bit sticky, it still works really well. Okay, so I've got my thin black and my gold in the middle. I just want to trim those to roughly the same size. Try and get as many sort of straight bits as I can. And obviously these bits that I trim off, I can just separate those out again and they can go back into my soap dough to be used again. So I've now got my two layers and you can perhaps get a little bit of a better idea there that the black is thinner than the goldy colour and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to layer those a bit more. you see is, if you focus, is I've got some really, really thin lines to sort of give me that sort of veiny look 
that you get in a dragonfly wing. Now, these little bits that come off, these bits of black and some of the gold, what I've been doing with mine, because I've already made some of these, is the offcuts, I'm obviously going to roll up and just use those for another round of soap dough. And then, to be honest, it doesn't actually bother me if this black isn't super black for this project, is just taking these little offcuts and just squishing those in with the black as well. And just, just so I'm not wasting any of that soap dough. Okay, so I'm just going to tidy this one up as well. And then I'll carry on making enough of those until I've got all of the sort of wings that I need to make my dragonflies. I'm just going to move on to carving the little bodies. Now obviously I could extrude these out, but I thought I'd do things with just, you know, a knife and things rather than always extruding everything. So what I'm doing here is I've got some more soap dough and rather than mush it all up and then try and get it nice and smooth, I've just literally pulled it out of the bag that I store it in, in the block that I've stored it in. And therefore it's in a nice firm block. So rather than mucking around with it, I'm just gonna use that to give me some nice straight firm bits that I can then shape to give me my little dragonfly bodies. So I'm just gonna cut some of those off, hopefully keeping them nice and level. And then I can muck around with those to get my dragonfly bodies. Okay, so let's make some bodies now for our dragonflies. So I've chopped those little pieces up and this is sort of an end bit, so I've deliberately picked out the bit that wasn't quite as nice and straight as the others. And all I'm going to do, first of all, is shape its head. Now, these are just some cheap um, sort of clay tools that I've got from Amazon, so nothing complicated or special. So I'm just going to go through and just sort of chop off a little bit and round the head off a bit. So I've finished with all those little bodies and then all I've done is, remember the soap that we squished together to make it in lots and lots of lines? All I've just done is cut it into some strips and then shaped some wings out of that by squeezing those together. And then for my moulds, I thought I would do this in some round moulds just because I thought about sort of making a shape of like the amber that has got the bug solidified in it and setting into a loaf and then I thought well do you know it might be like nice just to do some sort of round soaps with them in there. Now all of my round moulds what these are is I just found an acrylic supplier um, well not necessarily local to me I did order these on the internet but they were in the UK and the good thing with doing that is I was able to buy an entire length, I bought a one meter length of acrylic and you could choose between cast acrylic and extruded and the cast is much better, it's much more expensive but it doesn't absorb any chemicals and it's a lot longer lasting. The other thing that was great as well is that I got to choose exactly the dimensions that I wanted so I could choose my internal diameter so I wanted a seven centimeter diameter for the soap and I could also choose the external, so I could choose how thick I wanted these to be, which was great. So I bought a whole metre of this, and then I just got it chopped into the lengths that I wanted. So I've got some longer ones for when I want to do a longer soap, and then I've got some shorter ones for when I want to do these sort of more complex designs that would struggle in a longer soap. And then I've just made some end caps for them. So I've got all my little shaped parts that I made, so my bug centres, 
and I'm just going to stack them into the moulds a little bit fiddly initially and the key thing I'm looking for is I want to make sure they're going to join all the way down the side of the body So that for me, something like that is going to be good. Now you could stick these down with a little bit of um, melted cocoa butter or something. I've made mine deliberately tight, quite tight. I may regret this later. Um, so hopefully they won't move around too much. But I am probably going to pour a little bit of soap in first just to set them up and then pour the rest. Now mine are a little bit prouder than the actual moulds themselves and that's great because I do want to plane off the top and bottom so I get some nice designs. So I'm just going to pop the rest of those in. Okay, let's have a look at our additives. Now this was kind of my inspiration picture um, that I took from. So my dragonfly in the middle, obviously mine's a bit darker than that because I didn't want to risk it just completely disappearing into the back of the soap. And then the molten amber, it's sort of a mixture, it's like a mottle effect between sort of a, a light goldy colour and a much more yellow colour. So the colours I'm going to use are two colours that I use so much. Both of them are from Mike and Mama, Golden Shimmer and Sunshine Yellow. I use these so often um, in my soaps. And the fragrance oil is Molten Amber from NI Candles. And this is a lovely fragrance. I was really pleased when I tested it. It did smell really lovely and it behaved pretty well in cold process. So I've got all of my oils and my lye all in one go because I'm going to pour this whole thing together. I'm just going to do an in the pot swirl. Just to get the look of that molten amber going through the soap. Now this fragrance doesn't discolour and it holds its scent nicely, but it does move reasonably quickly. Um, when I tested it, it didn't stay that fluid for that long, but it didn't go unpourable for about 10 minutes. So I'm hoping I'm going to have enough time to work with it. I just want to make sure, ideally, that I can keep it really fluid for an amount of time to get between sort of all the little fiddly bits of my dragonflies that I've got. So I'm just going to take this just to an emulsion. And it may not be quite at emulsion yet. If you notice, I haven't really tested it or anything. But I need to split it off and I'm going to wait till when I split it off my colours have come to a very light trace before I actually pour anything. So I'm definitely going to make sure that I've got a light trace before I start pouring. Yeah, I can see on the underside of my stick blender I've got a bit of splitting apart where it isn't quite at an emulsion yet. Okay, so remember if you've got that, that's fine, you can carry on going, but it does mean that any time you're going to split it, you've got to stir it before you split. You cannot let it sit because it will settle and split apart. Okay, so I'm going to divide mine out. Okay, so I've got my yellow there already dispersed in, and there's my gold dispersed into some oils taken from my batch now this is going to be a subtle
subtle colour difference between the two because I almost just want it to look like sort of the shimmery effects in that molten amber that I showed you in the picture. Okay, so I think those two will be quite good together. Okay, so I'm just going to add my fragrance oil. Okay, let's bring my little bugs in. Now I've deliberately made more batter than I need for these. I've worked out how much I need, but then what I thought is I'd like to do some extra little stone soaps with any overpour that I've got. Okay, so I've held my jug up high and down low, and now I'm just doing it very low, because I do want to make sure I've got some coming to the top surface of my soap. Okay, and again, just use my spatula there, because sometimes you can get a whole wadge of the first colour coming out before you start seeing your in-the-pot swirl happening. Now it's still at the very, very lightest of traces, but as I said, I'm a little bit worried that it's going to thicken up a bit on me. And with an in-the-pot swirl, you can't stir your remain batter. So I'm initially just going to pop a piece, a piece, if you can do a piece of soap, a bit of soap into each of these, just to sort of potentially hold the base a little bit. And then I'll go back and fill them in. And hopefully stop all these little wings flying around everywhere. stayed fairly still. Okay, so I'm hoping they're going to be all right. I've tried to push them as much to the bottom as possible. As I said, ideally it would have been nice to fix them a little bit first. I could have done that with some cocoa butter. But I'm just going to leave those now to set up. This over amount, which I deliberately made, I'm just going to pour into some stone moulds. I'm not going to do that on camera just because I, I really don't want to move these at the moment. And I'm sure um, you've probably seen people pour stuff into individual moulds before, so I'm just going to do that with that excess. So here are our soaps the next day, and one thing that's quite interesting, can you see these three? All very similar, and this one has actually picked up a bit of soda ash. Now, 
The only difference between those at all is that I had space on a part of my tray in the oven where I see popped them that these could be covered and I just covered them I left them I didn't wrap them in cling wrap or anything I just covered them with a tea towel this one wouldn't fit so I just left it on its own uncovered and can you see even just that covering with a tea towel I mean a tea towel is in no way airtight but this was just completely exposed and it's not a huge amount of soda ash but can you see the difference in those that even just a light covering has actually helped to cut down on that soda ash that's, that's quite amazing isn't it um, I normally with most of my soaps that are in a loaf mold I do actually seal them with some cling wrap and then I don't get any soda ash at all but yeah that's that's quite amazing just to see I didn't think the effect of just a tea towel would actually make really much barrier against the soda ash. I wasn't bothered about soda ash with these because I know because I've made them all sticky out and knobbly <laughs> that I'm going to be cutting that top surface off as anyway. Right, so I thought I would unmold these or certainly at least some of them on the video. I never line my tubes at all. Okay, I'm just going to get started. And I've just made myself a little pusher for this. But obviously, what I used to use, when I used to use just a bit of drainage pipe, obviously new drain pipe I just used to use a tin can underneath okay. and we can see those popped out the reason I don't line is because I find when you line tubes it's very difficult to get this lovely smooth surface it's somewhere you're going to get a crease down it or or the paper that you use to line it actually wrinkles a little bit you can line with sort of plastic mats and things but again you get a bit of a seam down them okay so there's that i think they come out a lot nicer so i'll just push out the other ones okay so that's them all unmolded and all their nice sides that they've got And here's a photo of a couple of the finished soaps. Now out of that batch of six soaps that I made, I did have a couple of them where the wings were quite detached from the bodies. Um, so overall four out of six, but I knew I should have really stuck those down and kept them all held together. I hope you enjoyed this video and you like the soap. If you do, it'd be great if you gave me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see what I'm making in the future, why not subscribe to my channel? If you've got any questions or comments, then please leave them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching everyone. Happy soaping!